Uh, let's start today's class. I will start with uh, little patches that we skipped before because it was not the proper time or or uh, I missed it. So one brush that we did not cover it, it was the was the, the clone brush. Um, so let's see what we can do with the clone brush. So the, the idea of cloning is to take uh, one piece of uh, of our work and actually to clone it to some other area in case that we want to change something. And Yure will talk a little bit about it more. Uh, so let's see how we can do it. So if we just take the clone brush, okay, let's let's go to our body. Okay, let's clone the body. Uh, and let's make a paint layer. And let's take our own uh, clone brush. Now you can see it's a little bit uh, different brush. You have the square and the circle. So the circle is where uh, it's going to paint, the square is going, it's where it's going to sample from. It's a little bit similar to Photoshop. Uh, now with V, with the letter V, uh, if we click and we go with a round, with the brush itself to whatever area we want to sample from, and then we click one time, you can see that now the circle and the square were, are aligned. It means that we sample this area. Now I can move my brush and you can see, a, a, before I will start painting, the square brush, the square part will not move. Uh, and then when I start, you can see it's kind of, it's hard probably to see in the video, but if you try it yourself, you would see it's following this area that we sample. Now you can see nothing is actually happening. Uh, and this is because we need to enable something in the layer. So let's go to our layer, layer five in this case, and we are on base color. Now it's important to know what we are on because this is how, what we are going to enable. So let's make it pass through. And now you can see that we actually got something, but it doesn't, still doesn't look like it should look uh, like it won't. And the reason is because we sampled now only the color. So let's go to the height. And let's do the same with the height. Let's put it on pass through. And now you can see we got also the height. Now it looks now very similar, but we still don't have the, the roughness and the metallic. Uh, so it still looks different. So let's just go quickly and do it for the roughness. I don't think we need metallic here. And it's not so uh, visible the change uh, right now, but if we'll go to the channel of the roughness, You can see, uh, if I put it on normal, we don't have it, and now we have it. Um, okay, so this was uh, this was the uh, clone brush. It's quite useful, uh, especially for small changes after, if you have a model which is with a weird shape and tri planner doesn't work properly, you might need to go back and fix some areas. So this is a good uh, uh, is a good tool for that. Uh, just don't forget, if it's not passed through, you will see no changes. And don't forget also to act, uh, enable it on the other, uh, on the other uh, layer uh, channels, uh, and especially on the roughness and me metallic, because this is not obviously, uh, obviously visible. This is when it comes to uh, uh, clone brush. Now. <coughs> few uh, uh, comments that I thought would be beneficial to know. So when you work on uh, on um, roughness or, or metallic, and sometimes it's very hard to see live uh, what actually the changes are. So for example, if I would go back to my roughness, put it on normal, also metallic. Uh, oh, it's, there's not much it's hard to see the difference. I'll go and put it on pass through. You see that there is some, but it's a little bit hard to see. And my recommendation when you work on those channels and also before you decide to finish with your scene is to go over the channels uh, to really look what each channel gave you because sometimes things will look very nice, but you would realize later on that there is no, defini no, no variation when it comes to uh, to the roughness or to the metallic. So the way to do it, it's uh, 
two ways. One is to go here, and you can see we have all our channels. So we can go to the roughness. And now you can see in the roughness, it's very clear that nothing happened in this area. You can see here it looks in one way, and it should look similarly in this area. So we can do pass through, and now you can see the difference. Now the other way to see those maps is to, to toggle between them, it's with the C. So normal plus height, base color, uh, height, and so forth. We have all of those. And you can see when you look at the color channels, okay, this, this is quite made quite well, but sometimes you can find mistakes in the color, color channel. It can look a bit blurry or, or it's really good practice to go once in a while uh, through all of those uh, through all of those channels okay so let's see now the other way, thing we can see is we can see at the bake map so we can and this we toggle with a b so we can also see how our bake is going on we can see that we don't have id for example and we can see how our ambient occlusion looks which is quite okay and the curvature and so forth. Okay, uh, one more thing that we can do, <coughs> it's a little bit a uh, mishmash of, 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 of a class, let's say I'm more covering what, what we skipped. So we have the channels and we can create more channels if if we need to. For example, we can create emissive. If there is any need for emissive in our scene, we can create emissive. Just bear in mind when you create channels, it creates them only on the texture set that you are uh, that you selected, except unless if you have this uh, UI, UDIM. Now, if I will go back to this texture set, I don't have emission. So it's good, it's saving maps that are necessarily later on to be exported, but you need to pay attention. Okay, so let's do a little bit of emission. Or we can add, we'll do it classically. And maybe paint. Let's paint the eyes. Now you can see this painting is also, I don't know if you've noticed, but it, I'm also painting in places that I don't want to paint. So I can also, I can either go to this kind of paint by, by polygons and Let's do by, so here we have, we can paint triangles, we can paint uh, polygons, we can paint everything that is connected to each other, which in this case, let's just look what, what we get. So now if I paint with this mode, everything that, the, every mesh that actually is connected to each other will be painted. So it's everything but the eyes, because the eyes are their own mesh. Okay, this is not what I need in this case. I mean, I could actually just select the eyes. But it's also painting me things that I don't want to. Okay, the other option is UV islands. So in this case, it's very good. I can just take those islands and I get the eyes. Now, if we do want to paint with a brush for some reason, if those things are connected, but we get this artifact that I got yesterday, yesterday, sorry, uh, that I got before, that it's painting in other places, what we can do, we can go to the brush settings and change it, uh, if you remember, from the wrap to the UVs. And now it will just paint according to 
how the UVs are and it will not try to to connect uh, close points and paint them together <clears throat> okay so now we painted those eyes uh, and now let's set up the emission so we don't need color roughness height we just need the emission let's know, make it maybe red For some reason, we got nothing. And the reason is that we have the emission on zero. So we can have it more. Now you can see, I can still see the eye because I did not change my color. I just changed the emission. So um, now emission will make a bit more sense when we will go over rendering. Uh, but for the moment, uh, the point was that we can add more channels uh, and we have quite fair fairly big selection for a different kind of works uh, if we want to have opacity we need a shader that support opacity uh, and let's go to up here to our shader and you can see that that one of them one of them is cut out which means that there is either black or white no grayscale and the other one is uh, is supporting uh, mid tones. So the first thing we would do, we will have to change our shader. And you see, nothing would really change. But now it it will allow us to actually have transparency. Uh, so let's try to make transparency with the glasses. I'll just see which where they are located. Okay, so it's this one. Okay, so this is our uh, glasses, and the first thing we need to do, I mean the first thing, the second thing after we, did, we change the shader would be to create a channel that would contain this opacity. So we'll go to the plus and let's put opacity. And now you can see, let's make a new one, and you can see I'm getting now opacity option. I can kill everything else and now I can do opacity. Now this opacity is kind of nice uh, but it's not really like opacity in render. Uh, if you would render it now it doesn't have a refraction and some other properties <coughs> but it can be useful. Okay so let's look a little bit uh, into rendering. I saw that, uh, that uh, some of you uh, did some renders it was very nice uh, but let's see what more option we have when we want to render so we either click the camera icon or we can click f f10 f10 and f9 is to toggle between render <clears throat> okay so let's start up here so here is the we can pause the render if for some reason we need to and then we have uh, uh, how many samples we have and how much time. Now, in Substance it works that whatever comes first, stop the render. So if I would give it, so for now it was 10 seconds, 100 seconds. So after 100 seconds, it will, uh, the render would say done. Let's go with 10. And it's done. Although you can see it may manage to do only 437 uh, uh, samples out of 1000, but because 10 seconds passed, it stopped it. So it doesn't go with the highest one, it goes with the first one. But if I will give it 10 hours, but I will change the maximum samples to 200. A 
should put even less. I will just just not to waste time. So now you can see. I still I have ten minutes, but because it's finished the 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 uh, sampling, it will just stop. So this is good good to know. And when you looking for a position and doing tests, you can put it low, but then you can really go high and get very very detailed uh, render. Now it's not always necessary to have more render time. It really depends how much reflections and specularity you have in the scene, or or very um, or glow and stuff like this that can create um, this noise but some simple renders like wood without too much reflection can be very fast and quite will look quite good and let's let's skip to this area now as a default it just takes your screen size and it's try to render it uh, but you can overwrite it so if you do overwrite I can I can do maybe 1k Okay, so you can see, we have now different kind of a crop. <coughs> okay, then you have the display setting and the shader setting. So let's start with the shader setting because it's already open. So the shader we can even while rendering, we can change shaders. Okay. Um, then we can control the properties of the shader. So you saw before I increased the emissive. So you can decide how much you want this shader to, to support uh, uh, the glow or the emis emission. And you can do the same for how many reflections uh, and uh, refraction, which I don't know what really does because there is no refraction. Uh, scattering and some other op options. Okay, and then we have the display settings. And display settings is divided to a three, uh, three sections, which you don't need to, they're just moving from one to another. You can just scroll down. But if you know where it is, you can just click it and make it faster. Okay, so the environment map is the first thing we have here. And we can choose different environments that and you can see that the environment really affecting our light. It's not just the background. It's also giving us the, the light uh, atmosphere. That this would be very reddish. And then we have... Uh, this is quite... It's older project, so I have some maps that don't exist anymore, I think. <clears throat> okay, then we have the environment exposure. So if we feel that it's not enough light, we can always open it a little bit more. Uh, then we have the rotation. And the rotation is what we do when we press shift with, uh, with right click. It's just rotating the environment so if somebody don't remember the shortcut you can always come here and rotate the environment then we have the section of the dome which is our environment let me put something a bit clearer um, so oh, sorry this is the camera okay this is the dome the dome is the sphere that we have around that gives us the light uh, so we can have everything, we can have uh, only the sphere, so I don't know if it's noticeable, but you kind of lost, we kind of lost the floor. Okay, now we have the floor, and you can see it with the, the shadows, actually. I will ch change the something more visible, okay, now we can see clearly the shadows, and if we have only sphere, we do not see the. We still see the shadows, but we don't have. Uh, we don't have some kind of a floor. And we have infinite sphere. It's just look a little bit different. 
we can cancel the ground now we don't have shadows or we can if it's confusing for us we can just have a clear uh, color uh, and also if you save it as JPEG then you will get gray background so if you are planning to save it directly to to a JPEG you can still control what kind of background you want to have okay then we can we can shift the environment uh, on the X on the Y so as you, you can see that now the floor is a bit too high and I noticed that sometimes I noticed that uh, in some of your rendering uh, the object was a little bit floating it was something like this so just you just need to know uh, that you can change it you can bring it back it's quite subtle so you might need to type uh, very small numbers Now we can also decide how much we want the shadows to be. To, uh, and this means how much we want the shadow to come from the environment, how much of it, and, and we can also have the glossiness. Okay, so this this was our DOM. This is responsible on our light. And then we have the camera. Okay, so the camera is just you have the focal length which let's say the default is uh, more or less uh, I would I would say phone angle and sometimes it can be very very uh, not flattering angle so I would recommend to be on 50 and 50 kind of give you more uh, professional camera uh, distortion it's not very distorted and especially with f if you do face of a person it can be very unflattering um, because when you are on 17 you will need to get way closer to the and then you start to get all those uh, distortions and it's it's more apparent when it when it's a uh, when it's a person face then you then we have the aperture which responsible on on how much uh, blur we would have in the background uh, if you know a little bit about cameras, then you will understand. Okay. Now underneath we have the uh, post effects. And this is if you are happy with render and you are not going to take it to any other software, you could achieve a little bit more with the uh, post effect so on a default all of them are off so we can have a color correction and it's quite self-explanatory so I will not go over all of them then we have the depth of field okay it's not enabled so let's leave it for some other time uh, then we have tone mapping so we can either, even more play with the, with the exposure and we can also change the gamma if we are moving to some other uh, devices that have different gamma <coughs> we have the, the glare so this would kind of give us a little bit more interesting result with uh, Yeah, if it will just happen. Oh yeah, I need to take this on. Huh. It happens, but not as I wanted it. Ah, okay. 
Okay, so you can see we get kind of uh, some nice, interesting effect of uh, of glare, and we can also choose between bloom and some other options. You can have lens flare and so on. <coughs> you can play with this. Uh, then we have the vintage which is just one filter and the last distortion. So basically it's not uh, uh, from my experience, I would say it's not the best render, but uh, if you work on a model and all you need is some nice preview, you can achieve uh, quite nice pr preview out of uh, directly out of uh, out of substance, and it's nice to have those options. Um, let's go and bake it real quick, as we already know, so I would not really go over it again. Maybe a bit higher. Okay, you can see that uh, it didn't bake very well. Now, the problem, and it's generally a problem with these models because they are very low, so we need just to increase the the box around it, and maybe 0.5 is enough. Okay, so you see the baking is a little bit better now, uh, but we have this problem that we talked last time, that things are projecting uh, on top of each other. And we said that the solution would be uh, to bake by mesh name. And then, they, then it means that in the scene, it will just look for the, the same mesh, uh, the same mesh name with just a, a suffix high and compare it to suffix low, and it will bake only one by one. So I will change it by mesh name. And you can see the problem uh, was solved in this sense. You can already see it. Now, the other thing that we have here, which we can also use by mesh name, if I will hide, you can see that I have ambient occlusion also on her uh, on her neck. Now, the, the sometimes it's not a problem. In this case, it could be a problem because when there would be animation, the the, bra uh, the necklace would move, and then it would be a bit weird to see underneath. Uh, this uh, kind of black ambient occlusion. So we have a very similar solution for this. I don't need to bake those anymore. So if you go to the, you can see that each channel has its own, not each channel, but some of them has their own uh, uh, settings. So this is the rays. I would recommend to it uh, one to eight, uh, but it's, it's just depends how much, uh, how good, res uh, how good baking you would like to have and then we have uh, self occlusion and now it's set on always which is very similar if we go to the common we had this option always so if we put it here by mesh name it will just bake ambient occlusion only on the on the on the same object with itself without any other intersections so just bake it again Okay, so you can see now we lost this uh, ambient occlusion here, which was good, but we also lost ambient occlusion on her neck because her neck was close to the shell. So we kind of uh, need to give up somewhere, some somehow. We either get that or that, but we can also paint back the ambient occlusion here. Um, so, yeah, okay. So th this was a little extra thing. Uh, we also have it with the uh, thickness. You can see it's the same same idea, and also we have the secondary rays. Now let's go just quickly to the ID, and you can see that it, the default is material color, and this is what I explained you last time that if you make in 
Blender or, or Maya, if you give different colors to a different uh, part of the object, it will just bake it as, uh, as ID map. Now you have some other options, and uh, this is a bit more advanced. You can also paint the vertis vertices already in the app, and you can also have uh, um, some kind of a random ID based on how many polys are uh, are not connected physically to each other. So just let's quickly take this and. So it gave to each object in the scene, which is uh, independent, it gives its own color. So if you have a lot of objects and you want to create quick uh, ID map, so you can also do it in this way. <laughs> okay. So this is about, uh, this is a few more things that we didn't mention when it comes to baking. Another thing that uh, that we glossed over is to import asset, and Yure did it while he was uh, showing his work. But let me just do it again, so it's very clear. So I open my source uh, where where my files are located. So let's start with just a simple uh, texture map, and we just throw it here. Then we can select all of them, or one by one. Uh, it, de it depends if you need to change all of them at the same time, or, or to change each one separately. So you have different options to import. So if it's texture, of course we put it on texture. Then we have these three options. The one is just to use it now. It will still stay in the scene where you plugged it, but next time you will open the scene, you will not have it in the shelf. The other option is uh, to the project. So it will save it on the shelf, but only in this project uh, that you are working on. And the other one is to the shelf. So if it's something that you really use frequently, uh, like some brushes that you found or some other things that you want to have all the time with you, uh, then you can put it on the shelf. And in every project, you will have access to those, uh, to those textures. Now, it's better not to put too much on the shelf because it, it gets very fast uh, full and uh, confusing. Um, so yeah, uh, this are the option. Let's do it for a current session. And you will get those uh, files in your scene. So now we can we can use them at, w at will. Let me just, I will create a fill layer just to show it. And On the okay, so we can put the base color and we can also put this height. And you can see we can use any kind of file that uh, that we bring. Now, other thing we can bring is uh, like uh, its environment, which is what brings the light to the scene. And we can also bring uh, materials. So you have already in lesson six yesterday you have moss and rock so let's just and let's say stone soil and it's the same process very simple you just throw it here but this time you need to define differently so this 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 time it would be a base material and if you really really like these materials you can put it forever but uh, Okay, so now I get those based materials and I can use them. And if you go to uh, your base material, which is materials called, you can see you have the moss and the rock and other things. So this is how we bring uh, a new asset to, to the scene. Okay, now uh, another thing uh, that we I kind of used a few times but never explained so we can always change our uh, our model so if you decided to change UVs or anything uh, you can r bring again your model so you can start uh, the work if you are in a hurry you can start the work with uh, not the best UVs uh, 
and then later on sometimes you get better UVs and you just change the model you just need to bear in mind that if you change anything with the islands not not the position if you cut the island to two islands or if you combine uh, islands a little bit different you might lose uh, your uh, brush work so whatever you did with the brush strokes will get lost all the rest would stay the same so when you work with a with a brush then you you need to to bear in mind that this is a this option exists that's why it's a lot of time it's good to use especially with ids it's good to use id map and not to paint the mask by yourself because even if uh, even if things change later on you can always uh, bake the id maps um, so yeah so the way we do it is edit project configuration and we can select this model again so now i don't have different model for this but i will just bring the high just to show that it works uh, you have more things here if for some reason your project was set up in the wrong uh, uh, normal map so you can also change that so you so saw i got uh, the same model now it's high poly and i lost uh, kind of lost uh, okay it has also very bad UVs so it's not really good model to, exp to, sh to show it about uh, to show it on let's go back to our okay so th this is one option that you have you can bring uh, the model many many times and change things um, and, and it will still work okay uh, the other thing I wanted to show is the, uh, the clone a little bit but before I would just like if it wasn't clear I would just like to, s to sh show in a very simple example what uh, Yure made when he did the ID maps okay so so it starts with the paint layer and the color doesn't matter too much it's good if they are different f significantly from each other so it's easier for the program to select them uh, but I will just select one color. So. Okay, so this is 100% uh, blue. Ooh. Yeah, it's the wrong one. So, yeah, you can start to paint. And then we'll add another paint. And let's select different color. And let's have even third color. I did it on the same, but you could have uh, another paint. Okay, so now we have uh, this kind of uh, configuration and it could be also uh, uh, totally different. You could put one on each one and it's, it would still work. Now we need to make s somehow to make out of it a uh, texture file. And this is leading us to a whole new uh, place that we, we didn't explore yet. And this is how we export our textures. So this will be a bit technical. So let's go here to export textures. And you can see we got this, this window. Uh, we have our uh, texture sets. So we can decide which one is going to be baked. Uh, then we have the location we are going to bake to. I'll just quickly set it up. Uh, then we have what kind of baking we would like to do. There are many, many options to different platforms. We'll come to this in a bit more details. And then we have the, the file type. 
which says based on output template so we will see where to set it up we can also set it up here if we want all of them to have the same and also the size we can decide the size of the textures we can decide one by one or can we, we can decide for all of them so right now it's set to be uh, according to the settings of each one of them and if you go one by one you can see uh, we have all the information what map is it going to bake uh, the resolution and the file type and you can change it if for example those should be way smaller so we can change them if you don't like it this way and if for some reason we need one that is not PNG we can decide that one of them can be JPEG okay next window the next one is a bit more complicated and this is all the presets now you can go about just by using preset uh, pre-made preset and most of uh, I think most of the things exist here uh, you have unity you have Arnold you had uh, PBRs and many many more V-Ray Unreal so you can just use those and most of the time it will just work but sometimes like in this case we will need to create our own uh, so let's let's create new one I will click plus. We'll call it. Uh, okay, we'll call it ID. Or actually, let's be more general color. Okay, because this is what we are taking from in this bake. And now you can see we have nothing here. If I will look in some other preset, you can see we have a lot of things going on. So let's go to the color. So the first thing we need to decide is what kind of a map we are going to have. And for color, we'll use RGB. We can also have R plus G plus B, which means that we could plug to each color channel a different uh, output. And it saves, it saves a lot of space uh, when it comes to textures in, in apps. Then we can have RGB plus alpha. So it's again, uh, we can plug one file to the RGB, one file to the alpha and grayscale and R plus G plus B plus A. That makes sense. So let's start with RGB. This is our case here. So when it comes to the naming, you have few options. You can have uh, a prefix of the project or the name of the mesh or the name of the texture set or uh, the name of the UV uh, UV um, area, uh, UDIM. Uh, now, you, what I like is to use texture set because uh, then late, later on when I plug the the maps to the material, I have the same name for the material and the same name for the maps. So then I will add underscore and I will call it color. Or maybe in this case, I will, I will call it ID just so it's not confusing later on. Okay, but so now it's nothing is plugged here. You can see that they get color when something is plugged to them. Nothing is plugged here, and we need to plug something from here. Now this is a, a it's a little bit uh, complicated, but not very much when you get the idea. So we have three different uh, areas. We have the uh, ma uh, mesh maps. This is what we baked. You can see it's have the same names. It's very similar to what we're baking. So you can actually export the same uh, ma mesh that, a map that you baked. You can export it. It's not very useful because you can also export them directly. You don't need to go through this window. Uh, and I will show you later on. Now the other area that we have is the, it's the input ma maps, which is also the channels. And so just close it for a second just to make it more clear see this is our bake map and then we have the channels so let me I will open it again and I'll go to my uh, ah, we call it color okay so this is our channels and you can see they are way more than what we actually have in the scene because we this is, is default to start with but we have all of those options later on. Okay. 
So this this is what we worked on. So whatever we worked on in the in the color base would actually come out as a texture file. So let's just drag the color base. That's RGB channel. Now the other area it's converted maps, and this is what Substance is doing to make sense out of PBR to a different programs, more or less. So we we never gave Substance uh, um, uh, Ga Gaussian or or okay diffuse. It's not exactly diffuse what we are doing. We did never gave it specularity or reflection, but. Substance knows to translate the PBR workflow to the, the metallic plus roughness uh, plus height. It knows to take all of those information and then to convert them to those kind of um, properties. So for example, normal direct X would be combination of the normal that we baked plus the normal that we add to the scene that we painted in plus the height. Uh, and specular would be some kind of combination with the roughness, which I'm not sure how exactly the, the calculation work, but it works in the end if you have the right setup. So yeah, those all of the things that we can plug here. And if you look just at, for example, Arnold, uh, so you can see they have they they put it as a default the name of the mesh, then the name of the texture set, then color base, and you can see that this color is corresponding with this color. So it, it let you know what is plugged where. Then metallic would come to the metallic and um, and the normal, it's interesting, it has uh, the OpenGL because this is what Arnold used. And we also have the height. Let's look at some maybe Unity uh, and you can see here they are using R, G, B and A. So in one file you get uh, five different maps, which saves some some space and makes it a bit more optimized. Okay, I hope it's uh, it's clear. Uh, if not, you can ask. Uh, but for now, what we need is actually we set the location and we need to now decide what are we want to bake. So let's go to our color. We just created it now, and I will just export. So uh, I got for all of them because I didn't uncheck uh, one of them. And now I'll just bring it. Oh. I need to close this window. And let's just bring the ID. It's a texture. OK. So what I did now. It's how we, we did the IDs, but this is also what uh, Jure d did before the class to all the work that he was doing before. Uh, it's the same process. So now if we just delete everything, we don't need it anymore. And let's create something. And we can have black mask, uh, black black mask, and then add the color, or we can do it uh, directly here. So we get this color uh, node that we wanted from before. Now, if I would go to the and select color, I will get nothing. And the reason is that I need to plug it. I need to tell Substance to use this texture as an ID. So if I will put it now in the ID and if I'll try to pick now again, you see we got the ID that we just created. Something. Okay, that's uh, it's interesting. Ah, yeah, I know. I was on the preview of the ID. Okay, so you can see <coughs> now we have this ID. And we can come here and of course, we can add more than one ID, like you already uh, did. OK, so the same system would be also for baking if we have a very complex uh, work.
and we want to flatten it because of uh, it's too laggy or because it just the, the scene is too messy. Uh, now I would suggest you to, if you decide to flatten your work, to save one file um, as a backup in case you want to change some big things. Uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, you don't have to save all the work before if you are satisfied with it. 